Hi, welcome to Aliki's Art House Online. My name is Jay Benoit and I'm a trained artist. I do oil painting, mixed media drawings and installations. Um, and I also teach here at Aliki's Art House in Calgary. Um, today we're in my home studio, as maybe you can tell, but you can experience the magic of Aliki's Art House anywhere at the Aliki's Art House studio or at your kitchen table. Um, at Aliki's, we believe that everyone of any age and any ability can be creative and learn how to draw with some basic steps. Um, so I hope this mini lesson that we're going to do together today is fun and rewarding and that it will inspire you to keep on drawing from home. Um, we're going to be doing a very basic pencil crayon sketch of a landscape. Um, similar to the longer landscape classes that I teach at Aliki is just like a very reduced, um, simple version. We're going to be doing the sketch here today. Um, and we're going to start by figuring out where everything in the landscape is placed and then using pencil crayons to build up textures and create space with color. So you're going to need a piece of paper, pencil, uh, eraser and pencil crayons. I'll go over the few colors that you need here in a minute. Um, and you can draw along with me if you like. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my other screen here. That's recording. Okay. There we go, yes. So this is what we're gonna be making today. Um, we're gonna be going step by step through it. So just any kind of pencil is fine. I'm just using, I'm using a 2H um, just cause it's really light. But if you just have a regular like HB pencil, you can use that too. Um, and you might need an eraser maybe if you make a mistake, I guess. And then I just have some colors here. I'll show you what I'm using. Um, I'm going to be using a dark brown pencil crayon, uh, a green, uh, an orange, a yellow, Oops. Um, and then I have kind of like a light purple, and then I have kind of a light blue and a darker blue. If you don't have all these colors, that's okay, or if your colors are just different like they don't look exactly the same as mine that's okay too your drawing will just be a little bit different um but it'll still look good and then i also have a white my white is very tiny you can use a bigger white because that's probably going to be easier yeah so i'll put these to the side and then we're gonna get started Okay, so I'm just using some drawing paper here. You can just use regular printer paper. If you have drawing paper, it's going to say drawing on it. Um, and that's a really good one to use too for any type of drawing. So I'm just going to start out. My paper is about um, 9 by 12 inches. I'm going to make a smaller box because we're just doing a little sketch. We don't have to fill the whole page. And if you want to use a ruler for this, you definitely can. Um, I'm just starting, I'm just kind of doing the box here on my own. Okay, so now we have a little box and we have some edges to work with. Um, and then the first thing that we always kind of do in a landscape is we're going to find the horizon line. So I'm looking at the picture I've already done. The horizon line is the line at where the earth meets the sky. Here we have some mountains in the background that are, it's kind of, we're considering that part of the sky. The lands, so the horizon line is kind of going to be here where our road disappears. And that's the line that we're going to draw in. So it's lower than the middle of your square. So you can kind of look for the middle. And then you can just go a little bit lower. And if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. And that's one thing that's nice about doing landscape is things can be a little different. It's not like drawing a person's face. And then what I like to do to draw straight lines is just hold your pencil super loose, barely touching the paper, 
and just go kind of back and forth with your hand resting on like a board or on your paper and just go back and forth a bunch of times and then you'll just make naturally a pretty nice straight line. We want to hold our pencil really loose throughout the whole thing so it's barely touching um, and that's going to make it so it's easy to erase but it's also going to make it easier to draw instead of being all really really tense all the time. Um, the next part we're going to do is we're going to find the beginning of our road. So I want you to make a little mark just a little ways in and then coming up here we're gonna make a little mark a little ways down from your horizon line, just a little bit there. You can kind of judge that. And so I'm looking at the picture and looking at where it starts here and then where it starts here. And then we're gonna figure out the curve from there. We're gonna start with this point now and we're gonna lightly draw a line that's kind of curves up and then disappears along the horizon line. So let's do that next. Our line's gonna, so holding your pencil super gentle, just do a nice curve until it becomes horizontal like the horizon line, it kind of fades in. And then our next line down here, we're gonna kind of start to come up at a bit of an angle. Again, you can go back and forth until we get to about this point, but it's gonna be a little further away. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kind of curve it until it kind of disappears at the same point. And then we can kind of go over that again to make sure that the curve is really curving the way we want it. And then we have a little road, nice and easy. Um, then the only other things we're gonna put in is we're gonna put in some really little hills. So there's some little hills down here. Let's just do one little one and then attach to it. Do another, again, really soft, really gentle. And then we're gonna come up and we're gonna do one behind here and another one behind here and one kind of coming up. On the other side, we're just gonna do one bigger hill and it has a little tiny peak in it right there. And then we're gonna do a couple little lines that are coming up. We have a couple mountains in the background too. So let's do those again, really lightly with your pencil. Let's see, we're gonna start kind of on this first little hill here. And we're just gonna come up at a bit of an angle and then down a little, keep going at a bit of an angle. We can come back a little bit, angle, and then we're gonna come down to the right and up. We have some pokier mountains back there. So those aren't really hills. They're like more like Rocky Mountain shapes. And then attached to this one where we started, we're gonna come up to the left, down a little, up a little higher. And then let's come back just a little bit. That's gonna be kind of the edge of the mountain. Then we're gonna start at that same edge but we're gonna go the opposite direction. So we're gonna come back this way to the left and then attach to it, make another little one and then attach to it, we're gonna do another little one there. So really simple little mountains. Um, and then we're just gonna add a couple grasses down in here. So with this part, again, you just wanna make sure you're holding your pencil super light because we're gonna go over this with pencil crayon and we don't want to see the pencil too much through. So coming in here, um, we're gonna start by doing some grass. So instead of doing straight lines like this, which can look kind of funny, we wanna kind of almost do little scribbles. So we're gonna do some scribbles here and some scribbles here. And then we're gonna go along the road with some tall grasses, but as we go along the road, we're gonna do like a clump of scribbles, leave a little bit of space, a clump of scribbles, and they're gonna get smaller and smaller as they go. Because that's what happens in real life. Things that are further away from you, they look, look smaller. So that's how we're gonna to start to create some space. That's what's happening with our road too. At the beginning, it's really wide. And then as it goes back into space, it gets smaller until it disappears on the horizon line. We're also gonna do a few little grasses back here, but make sure these ones are smaller too. 
So just little scribbles. And that's it for now. Now we're gonna to switch to our pencil crayons to finish it off. So let's start with our dark brown. And this is where we're gonna add all of kind of the darkness in our picture. I'll show you. So you can see it in here. So we're gonna add all of these dark patches. And this is what starts to make things look realistic is that there's dark areas and light areas, not only color but light and dark within the color. So let's start by adding some dark patches to our grasses. And we're gonna do it the exact same way that we were doing it with the pencil. So nice and hold your um, pencil crayon loose. You can have a little more pressure because you want it to show up, but you want it to be loose and like you're just sketching really loose and free. And that's gonna actually make your drawing look more realistic because it's not gonna look um, super tense. It's gonna look like things are kind of natural, like they are just scribbling them in. So we're going all along on the edge of the road. And then when we get to the actual road, we wanna do some shading here too. And we're gonna follow this edge, but we're gonna go back and forth horizontal. So the direction that you make your marks is important. The grass is growing up, but the road is flat. So all of our marks on the road we're gonna do it really loose. See how I'm holding my pencil crayon on the side? And we're gonna go flat. And as we go into the distance, we have some here, but this is gonna be really, really light. So as things recede, as they go into the distance, they become lighter. There's less contrast, it's called. So I'm gonna make this front even darker a little bit so that the back can look even lighter. Same with some of my grasses here. I'm gonna make these a little bit darker so that the back looks even lighter. These little grasses in here we can put in, but we want them to be a little bit light because they're a little bit further away. Just little scribbles. Um, and then we're gonna leave a little bit of room here. Do another patch of scribbles coming up at the same angle as the edge of the road following it. Darker in front. And then coming up the side, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna like make a line here so that um, I don't go out of the lines too much. <laughs> so let's make this a little bit darker. And then as we go into the distance, it's gonna become lighter and also a little bit smaller as we go up and start to come along the edge here. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we don't want our grass patch to be just green or it's going to look a little funny because in real life, the light shines on places. There are places that are lower. There are little rocks and places where there's less grass. So we're going to use some brown in here too. And usually in a drawing, you kind of want to use the same colors a little bit everywhere so that it looks kind of natural and the whole thing comes together. So my grass is really far away. You probably won't be able to see the individual little strands of grass. So that's why I'm kind of still doing this back and forth pattern and just leaving some breaks in my scribbles. And then as I come forward, I'm gonna do that same thing, but I'm just gonna do some little patches. Maybe those are little rocks, little patches of grass in here. And they're a little bit darker. Coming up into the mountain area, we're basically just gonna very lightly, this is far away, so you want it to be really light. We're just gonna shade kind of the undersides of the mountain. See how I'm not going all the way to my drawn line, but just starting at the bottom. That way the light can hit the top of the mountains when we put that in. And on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna follow these lines and I'm just gonna put shading on the underside here and leave the top areas bare so that we can put light in there and it looks like light shining on them. Okay. So that's step one. Yeah. And step two is we're gonna do our road a little more with the orange. So we started with our darkest color and now we're gonna go to kind of our next darkest kind of medium color. Probably the orange and the green are both kind of medium colors. They're not light, 
They're also not dark, like our dark brown. So we could kind of start with either of them, but I'm gonna start with my orange and start to do the road. So the way to make things look kind of natural is to layer, oh, my pencil broke. You wanna layer your colors. So we started with dark. Next, we're gonna to go to orange and we're gonna put it right on top of the brown that we just did. All right, hopefully that will work. So same thing, hold the pencil crayon kind of on its side like you're shading. And we wanna go right on top of that brown and we can press a little bit harder because this color is not as dark. So it's not gonna show up as much. And this is kind of a reason why we make it the brown lighter here too, because then we can come back with another color and it's gonna fill in all those white spots. But it still kind of works the same way. We want our colors to be the brightest near the front and that's gonna make them really look like they're coming forward. So that's why I'm pressing harder here near the front. We're gonna do some light coming down the middle, show you what I mean. So there's gonna be light shining down the middle of the road. So we don't wanna to go too dark with the orange or when we come in with the yellow, it's not gonna have anywhere to go. It's just gonna sit on top of the orange. We want there to be some space for it. So you can kind of just fill that in a little bit. Then we can go a little bit darker around the edges. Going right over top of your brown. And I'm still doing the side to side mostly, except for this edge, because the road is flat. So we wanna give it that flat look with the direction. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Um, so we wanna use the same colors a little bit everywhere. You can see some of it in this one here. So you can see there's little bits of orange in some places and that just makes the whole landscape look like it's coming together and more natural. Because in natural landscapes, you don't just have one flat color. You have lots of different colors. So we're gonna use this orange and we wanna go super light, barely touching your paper. We're just gonna kind of put a little bit on the tops of our mountains. We can layer it into the brown a little bit too. Over here, tops of the mountains, but also layering into the brown. Doesn't have to be like super specific where you put it. Um, and then I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit in the actual grass area here. You can see that I'm not doing very much. See, just a tiny little bit. And that's just gonna make the whole thing look like it's coming together. Okay, now we have our green. So let's get that in there. What we're gonna do, so we're gonna put it in the grass here, but we do wanna leave some space again for the yellow so that it looks really, really bright and like the light is shining. So we can call this our mid-tone, um, like I talked about before. And so we don't wanna put it everywhere. We just wanna put it some places, like in this grass in the front. So we're layering again on top of the um, brown and coloring the same way you would draw, like it's as if you're shading, same direction. Pressing a little bit harder here, because this is like kind of our main grass in the front. Then I'm gonna put some back here, not pressing as hard so we leave space for the yellow. And then coming back here, we have our little grasses. So we can kind of fill those in a little bit more. And then we're gonna do some of our back and forth strokes coming back here. So these are way lighter. So make sure you're holding your pencil crayon light and we're gonna leave space for that yellow to come in. So I'm kind of jumping around doing a little scribble, jumping here, little scribble and jumping around here. You can go on top of your orange, that's totally fine. And then I'm gonna get into the mountains. So with my green, I'm gonna cover up really, really softly. I'm going on top of the brown and then maybe even a little bit on top of the orange. Still not going to the very tip of the mountain because I want that to be lit with some of that yellow. And then on the other side, same thing. So filling in the green. 
but not going all the way to the top. Okay. Now we're going to use our yellow and we're going to fill in all the white spots and we're going to blend everything. And you don't have to worry about pressing too hard with this because it's a really, really light color. So you can go ahead and, I mean, don't break your pencil crayon, but you just, you can press hard and you can go and fill in all of this area and it, it'll actually kind of like blend things together a little bit too. So I'm going to start in the road. You can kind of go on top of everything. I'm going in that middle area first because I left that blank or not as filled in so that the yellow could come through. There, and now it looks like there's light shining on the road. And now we can get into the grass. Still doing that side to side motion. You can leave some like little bits of white showing if you want, I think that's fine. Mine will probably have some little bits of white too. And I'm just going and I'm just going on top of like everything we've done. As you get into the grass, you can do more of the vertical stroke, more of the up and down stroke a little bit and just kind of fill in some of those white spots. Don't really have to be careful because it's just yellow and it's not going to cover up any of your dark colors. And over on this side. And then we can start to um, go over our mountains. So I'm going to start with the top and then go over everything a little bit. And it kind of blends it all together again. We got some nice hills going on. And same with the other side. Okay, so now we have like a nice, lit, beautiful landscape. And we just have to add the mountains in the background. Um, with these, you just want to be super careful because these mountains are really far away. We're going to be using cool colors. So like an orange would be a really warm color and it comes forward. Something like a blue or a purple would be a more cool color. And these colors are naturally going to look like they're further away as long as they're not too bright. If they're really bright, they might still look like they're coming forward. But um, that's why we're using cool colors in the back and we're gonna do them super light and we're gonna fade them out. So let's start with this purple. I kind of have a light purple going on. Um, and kind of the same thing as our hills, we're gonna leave the tips of the mountain and we're just gonna super lightly, barely, barely touching your paper. We're just gonna, Fill in the bottom parts of the mountain here. And same with the other side, we're gonna leave this crease white. So I'm filling in here, leaving that little crease because that's kind of the ridge of the mountain. And then filling in here on this side. You can see how it doesn't really have to be perfect at all. So don't worry about, about that. It can kind of look nicer the more messy it is in a way, because it just looks natural and it looks like a fun sketch and more of your personality can come out into it. All right, so with the same purple, I'm actually going to really lightly draw in some really far away mountains. I didn't want to use our pencil for this because they're so far away that I don't want there to be an edge to them. So I'm just doing a little kind of curvy line to show that there's some in the distance here and this is going to be again really light. Could do a little over here too. Yeah super light and then we're going to come in with our blue that's a little bit darker. I have another one that's a little lighter um, but I'm going to use the lighter one for the sky so that the mountains are a bit different from the sky. If you only have one blue, that's okay because your blue is going to mix with your purple and it's going to look different than your sky anyway. I just like to use a little bit of a different one if you have it. So we're going to come in again with this blue and we don't want to cover up the purple, but we're going to have the blue come more at the bottom. See how there's still some purple in there that's coming through. So more so at the bottom, we're kind of doing it at the same angle that the mountain is if you can. Okay. 
Okay, really light. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the yellow, but we're gonna do it with white. I have the tiniest white in the world, um, but hopefully you have a bigger one. And this, you can see how it's blending already. It's blending into each other. You can kind of go in a bunch of different directions if you want, because that's actually gonna make it blend together even more. So first I'm gonna blend into our bottom mountains here, and then I'm gonna blend that back one. There, so you can see that it might not make it take away all of the lines, but it just makes it a little bit softer. And this would be called burnishing because I'm kind of pressing as hard as I can and I'm trying to fill in like all of the spaces in between in the paper. So yeah, you can go in different directions, you can go in tiny circles, and I'm pressing really hard. This just makes it look a little further away because these front mountains have more texture and the back ones are softer. All right, lastly, we're gonna put in a little sky. So what I want you to do, we're gonna draw the top and the bottom of the cloud. Um, and you just want to hold your pencil like, or your pencil crayon kind of far back. And we're just gonna do like barely touching, we're just gonna kind of move it around and make, start at the top here, go down a little bit and then come up a little bit. Hopefully you can, yeah, you can see my line there. Then I'm gonna start at the side here and I'm gonna do the same thing. Yours doesn't have to look the same as mine, it shouldn't. You wanna be really loose so that you don't have a lot of control and then kind of drag it across. And this is gonna make a more natural looking line. So you're holding it really lightly and you don't have very much control. And so your line actually looks natural instead of getting like the fluffy cloud that maybe you're used to doing. Okay, so now we're gonna hold the pencil on its side again and we're gonna work in tiny little circles to just really roughly fill in the sky on the bottom. It's nice to go in um, circles a little bit if you want it to be smooth. If you don't want there to be a texture, circle can kind of get rid of that texture. And then coming up here, we're gonna fill in this part, same thing. And if you want to, you can use your white give it a more blended look. A little bit softer. Um, and then you can decide, like I sometimes like to make this top bit, just do one more layer to make the top bit a little bit darker, just to create some depth in your sky. And then you can come back and have like little areas that are darker, like maybe along here. I'm gonna add just a little bit darker over here. So I'm not really doing any more pressure. I'm just kind of doing a second layer, just like in tiny little spots so that the sky's not as flat. And then if you want, you can do another blend. Yeah, and that's it. That's our mountain landscape. Um, you can use a ruler to make a nice frame around it. I think that that kind of like makes the drawing look like it's coming together more. It looks more cohesive. Oh, my brown is broken. Maybe I can use this blue though, or you can use a black. Um, and yeah, you can definitely use a ruler, but I'm just gonna go for it. So having this kind of outline around it. Especially because our clouds like disappear into the rest of the paper a little bit. That can just make things really 
kind of pop out and look like they're part of your drawing. So your drawing looks separate from the rest of your page. Yeah. And if you ever wanted to sign it, you have some space here at the bottom. So you can sign down over here. If you wanted to put a title, you could put it over here. You could put a uh, grassland, maybe I'll call it. And you could put the date over here too, if you have some room, if you wanted to. And that's it. So let me come back to this screen here. Okay, yeah, so that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this mini lesson um, that you learned a new drawing tip for maybe some new ways to draw and continue to check out the Aliki's Art House website for more online offerings um, and have fun drawing. Thanks a lot.